Hey guys, back with another quick video on a new 11 Labs feature that will make your AI voice agent so much more versatile. In this video, I'll be doing a quick overview of this feature to help you understand the function and make the most out of it. This wasn't available in my previous 11 Labs video when the conversational agent first came out or during my tutorial. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to understand the feature better, what it can do for you, its current limitations, and how to implement it. So let's get right into it. So for convenience, I'm using the same restaurant caller that I used in my tutorial video, which you can check up here if you haven't seen it yet. So this new feature that Eleven Labs introduced to the conversational AI agents is uh, the multilingual function. So now the AI agents are able to speak in multiple languages and not just one language. So uh, as you can see here, you can select the additional languages. So I set the default as English. And as for additional languages, you can select up to 30 different languages, I believe. But yeah, here's all the list of uh, different languages that you can select. And I have uh, selected some languages here like Portuguese, Korean, Hindi, Italian, etc. I have asked some of my friends to try out the other languages and they've all said it's been really good. And I'll show you a few samples later on in this video. And another thing that you can do is you can also customize the first message for each language. So um, so here you can see the default in English. Uh, Hi, this is all fried chicken. And you can select the different first messages. So for um, Norwegian, it did uh, automatically translate it for me. So this is in Norwegian. And um, yeah, and here's German and Korean. This is, uh, this is one I set myself because I am Korean. So yes, here is the system prompt here. It's all in English. And I went over it in my previous tutorial video. So I'm not going to go over it in this video. So you can only have the system prompt in one language, regardless of how many languages that you offer it in. So for example, I'll just set it to Korean and I'll just uh, copy this just to save it. Um, I'll just actually quickly go over this now. Uh, I'll set it back to English. See, um, yeah, as you can see here, you can only have the system prompt in one language. So when you do design your conversational AI agent on 11 Labs, please prompt it in the language that you are most comfortable in as you cannot prompt it in different languages. And another thing, so there is a limitation when it comes to the multilingual features. So you can only select the language at the start of the conversation. You cannot change or switch languages in the middle of the conversation, unfortunately. So that's something to bear in mind, but uh, hopefully they do introduce a feature where you can switch language in the middle of a conversation. So so previously, before this feature came out, when I try to make it multilingual for um, international clients, uh, what I try to do was just to tell it in the system prompt that it's bilingual in Korean and English or whatever, and then try to make it speak multiple languages and just switch languages. But unfortunately, that didn't work. So it sounded like it was speaking the language for the first time. It sounded like a tourist trying to read a, a guidebook with basic phrases in that language. So unfortunately, that didn't work. But thanks to this, uh, you're able to select the language and just have a smooth conversation now. And I think this is a game changer, especially if you have a wide international audience of different backgrounds. So the way that you can optimize your AI agent for different languages is having a knowledge base in different languages. So as you can see here, I have the menu and the FAQs here in English. But what you can do is add a FAQ and a menu in different languages and tell your AI agent in the prompts to refer to the menu or the FAQ in different languages. For example, you can upload a FAQ document in Korean and in your prompt, you can tell it to refer to the Korean FAQ when it's speaking in Korean. And another really useful thing that you can do with a multilingual feature is you can uh, put it on the widget that you embed onto your website. And if you go on to the widget section here and you scroll down, you can see enable language section. So if you tick this, you can select a language here on the widget. So you can select English, French, Korean, etc. So when somebody calls on your website, they can easily select a language and just start talking in that language. So this basically means that you will be able to reach a wider audience. And this is especially useful if you have a lot of uh, loyal, regular customers from different ethnical backgrounds, such as uh, Chinese, Indian, Mexican, etc. And some advice when you select the voice, when you want to build a multilingual agent is to select a language that uh, can speak the language that uh, you desire to have. So for example, here, uh, the voice that I selected is Anna Kim. So it's, uh, so it's originally a uh, Korean voice. So I optimize it for a Korean speaking agent. So, uh, so when it speaks Korean, it sounds the most fluid and fluent and it can speak English very well as well. So I have a friend from Germany who tested this and he said that uh, it spoke German very well. It had a slight Korean accent, but uh, there was absolutely no problem in communication. This isn't a must, but it would be helpful to select a voice that speaks the specific language that you desire to speak or that is most likely going to speak the most. 
So for example, if you have a lot of international customers from Germany or France, then it will be preferable to select a voice uh, that's specifically for German and French. So to put your agent onto a phone number, you just uh, go on to the left here and select phone numbers and you'll be led to this page and you just want to press the plus button and you can import your own phone number from Twilio. So unfortunately, I don't have anything here right now because uh, for some reason, when I try to put a Twilio phone number onto here, it didn't seem to be working, but uh, it's, it worked perfectly fine when I was using that or retail AI. So when I use my Twilio number on Bappy or retail, it seemed to be working perfectly fine. But when I tried it on Eleven Labs, it didn't seem to be working. I don't know if it's just me, but unfortunately, I don't have a phone number to go over in this video. So unfortunately, I'm not sure how it works if you import a phone number from Twilio for a multilingual agent. I'm not sure if you have to select a language at the start or if you have to have different phone numbers for each different language. So uh, if uh, if you try it out, that would be great. So I'm under here now in the conversation history where I can see all the call records and the recording here and I'll go over a few sample calls that I did in the past few days so you can get a better understanding of how it went and the summary of the call. So this is a sample call that I did in Korean and as you can see it provided a summary and a criteria evaluation all in English because I initially prompted everything in English but as you can see here in the transcription you can see that it successfully extracted the entire transcript of the call in Korean and here is the call recording so I'll quickly play it. 안녕하세요. 서울 프라이드 치킨입니다. 어떻게 도와드릴까요? 예, 안녕하세요. 혹시 그 영어 가능하세요? 네, 영어 가능합니다. 어떻게 도와드릴까요? 아, 네, 됐고요. 그 아, 주소는 어떻게 되세요? 저희 가게 주소는 32번째 32번째 길 뉴욕 뉴욕 10001입니다. 아, 그러면 그러면은 그 뉴욕 어디쯤 있는 건가요? 저희 가게는 뉴욕의 맨해튼에 위치하고 있습니다. 아, 맨해튼 그 혹시 그 엠파이어 스테이트 빌딩 근처인가요? 네, 맞습니다. 저희 가게는 엠파이어 스테이트 빌딩에서 그렇게 멀지 않은 곳에 있습니다. 아, 네, 알겠습니다. 혹시 다른 궁금한 점이 있으신가요? 아, 아니요, 됐습니다. So this call was successful, it spoke Korean perfectly, but I didn't notice a flaw with the call itself. So, so here I asked the address for the shop and I, in the prompt I set the address as 32 West 32nd Street, New York, New York and the postcode 10001. And on the call here it said 32 uh, 32nd Street, New York, New York and, and read out each one of the numbers individually. So what it did was it directly translated the address from English to Korean and this is not how you say this address in Korean specifically. So this is a flaw that I found. When you read an address in New York, you don't say New York, New York, you just say New York, but um, it just said New York twice and it even read out the postcode, but normally you never read out the postcode uh, when you tell somebody your address. So that's a flaw that I found with this agent when I, I made it call in a different language while prompting in another language. And another flaw that I found was here, I asked it if it's close to the Empire State Building, which it is, and it got it right. So it said that it's close to the Empire State Building, but it said it in a very awkward way. So it's correct, but like it's not like how a Korean person would say it in real life. So uh, these are just like the slight flaws that it has. And this is something that you should take into account when you wanted to speak uh, fluently like a regular person and not directly translated. So my point of showing you this is to show that while it will speak the language perfectly, it might not get these things right. So this is something that you should take into account and this is something that you should um, you should tell the agent about in the prompt so it can actually speak like a regular person and not sound like it's directly translated from Google Translate. While this call is uh, still ready to go, you might want to fix this up before you uh, deploy it and for the best possible uh, customer experience. Here's another sample call that a German friend of mine made to test out the agent and uh, I'll just quickly play this. Hello, here is Soul Fried Chicken. Sie sprechen mit Susi. Wie kann ich Ihnen mm -hmm. heute helfen? Hello. Hello, here is Soul Fried Chicken. You are speaking with Susi. How may I help you today? Um, kannst du auch auf Deutsch reden? Ja, natürlich. Wie kann ich Ihnen helfen? Ich würde gerne was bestellen. Gerne. Was möchten Sie heute bestellen? Was wir haben, haben Angebot? Wir haben eine große Auswahl an koreanischen Gerichten, aber unsere Spezialität ist natürlich Korean Fried Chicken. Was interessiert Sie denn? Ja, Korean Fried Chicken hört sich gut an. Ich hätte davon... Wie, wie teuer ist das? Wir haben verschiedene Arten von Korean Fried Chicken. Möchten Sie das Snow Wing Fried Chicken mit Schnee, Käsepulver, 
das Yang Yeom Fried Chicken mit süß-scharfer Soße, das Soy Garlic Fried Chicken mit Soja Knoblauch Soße oder das Original Fried Chicken mit koreanischen Gewürzen? Das Original bitte. Okay, das Original Fried Chicken. So, as you can see here, again, on the transcript, it captured the German transcripts really well. And a flaw that I found, and as you saw just now, it uh, spoke English briefly here. So that's um, a slight flaw that you might come across. So this is something that you should uh, take into account and you can prompt your way out of this. And um, in the summary here, as you can see, it provided a summary in English, but it captured um, all the data in German. So such as the name and um, just how the call went. So besides the flaw of speaking English briefly at the start, um, I did notice that uh, it might have pronounced Yang Yom uh, quite awkwardly. I don't know if that's how you say it in German normally, but uh, for me it sounded awkward. So he said that the conversation went really well and he understood it perfectly. It just had a slight uh, Korean accent, so it's not a huge problem, but this is something that you should take into account. So you shouldn't have ex expectations that it's going to be 100% perfect. As you can see in the sample calls that I just provided, it will be 90-95% uh, perfect, but it's not 100% perfect. And as you know, AI technology is getting better every day and nothing was perfect at the start. It's only going to get better from now. But since ChatGPT was released to the public two years ago, this is very impressive progress. So going forward, if you want to create your own multilingual AI conversational agent, you should take the following into account. First, you should provide a knowledge base in the languages that you are going to provide for your agent. So have a separate knowledge base for English, for German, for French, etc. And the second thing to do is to tell it in the system prompt the languages that it is fluent in and depending on the language that it uses to uh, say things in a specific way. So such as uh, in Korean, tell it to uh, read the address in in the proper Korean way rather than directly translating uh, the address from English to Korean. So that's one example. And another thing to do is to tell it to uh, refer to the knowledge base in Korean if it wants to speak uh, Korean to the caller. So it's quite simple really. Just provide a knowledge base in the language that you want to provide and um, provide specific instructions for different languages in the system prompt as well. And also, like I said, you don't have to write the prompt again in a different language. So thank you for watching this quick video. Now you should be able to create your very own multilingual AI voice agent for your global market. My next video will be about prompt engineering for voice agents specifically. So please subscribe and stay tuned for that. With that video and my previous videos, you should be able to create and deploy your very own AI agent for your business to start capturing all your customers, answer their questions, book them in, and ultimately get more sales while doing less. If you found this video useful, please leave a like and subscribe. If you need any help building these, or want it built for you, book a discovery call down below. And if you want one-on-one -on -one consulting, then book a call down below. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.